All right, now let me know when everybody ready. ready. You saucy biscuit. Ow. No, that's offensive. Apologize now. What? Apologize. Yeah. So it's offensive biscuit. to say to say saucy biscuit. Apologize. I'm gonna apologize. <laughs> so make you cry on stream. But I'll do it. All right, I'm about to cry on stream. Bet. Um, <clears throat> what? What is happening? What's really, what's really going on, people? You're watching episode uh, 25 of the Market Podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, like I told y'all to, I wanted to make sure y'all know we have an audio version out pretty much on all uh, podcast platforms, even the ones that don't matter. Uh, make sure to follow the socials so you don't miss a thing. My oh. name my name is Trey, a.k.a. Young Grip Tape. <laughs> Who <doesn't ask> the <laughs> the what? It's messy Young Grip Tape. <laughs> oh what man grip tape my name is hi how you doing guys how's it going in quarantine i am the boy wonder uh wes what's going on and i'm nico mr behind the technology but we're all behind the technology still aha uh -huh. yep uh -huh. he's always been there yeah he's been there longer yep. than we have it's like stinking like whoever stinks they've always stunk like they they just there, and with sure. that minor with that minor behind the scenes change of how we're recording the audio, that we're even more behind the technology now. <laughs> yes, yep. sir. Oh, jeez. All right, how's everyone doing? Um, I'm nice and healthy. For any healthy new members is. here, this is uh this is Black Market Gaming. This is the Market Podcast. We are Black Market Gaming. This is the Market Podcast. Where the four of us, occasionally a guest, sit around and talk about games, anime, memes, other cool shit for about 90 minutes or so. And uh, so what's everyone playing this week? Uh, you know, uh, Animal Crossing still. Uh, Trash. Oh, true. Uh, I, Other than that, not really anything else because I've been binging the Monogatari series since I have that now. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's pretty much it. You've been um, re-binging the Monogatari uh, series. Yes, re-binging. I'm sorry. I'm I get it confused because it's like love at first sight once again. I'm not even going to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, with me, still the, uh, was it Warzone and Apex. I've mm -hmm. uh, been hopping back into Fighters every now and then. Just now got back into uh, Mystery Dungeon because I went away from it for a little bit. And uh, Blaze Blue Cross Tag. And pretty soon... I'm about to hop into this Resident Evil 3. I heard it's a quick game, which I'm kind of relieved at. So on Friday, I can do this uh, Final Fantasy 7. Mm-hmm. Yo. Yes, sir. I'm getting Final I'm Fantasy 7. I'm probably not going to get it at launch because I have my plate is full. But um, I'm going to buy it at some point. Yeah. Um, speaking of getting games, uh, I've been thinking about uh, playing Nier again. And actually playing it like, <laughs> through the other endings and stuff. Uh, it's, it's been a while. Uh, but mm -hmm. my problem is right now is I, uh, I don't want to play story games on my PC anymore. Especially now that it's down in the basement and I have my uh, quick access to my couch and TV. Um, and I have near on my PC, unfortunately. And so I've been debating whether I wanted to play it and everything. And then... <laughs> You know, Mr. Microsoft was so gracious to put it on Game Pass. So I'm going to do that yep. on Xbox. There you go, sir. And that's all. Are you planning <laughs> on just getting the canon endings? What'd you say? Are you planning on just getting the canon endings? Uh, yeah. Mostly, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Because yeah, all I did was uh, ending A and B, I believe. Yes, you still have uh, three more endings to go. Yeah, so. Mm. Nice. Um, what have I been doing? Not a damn thing. <laughs> I was about to say. Homework. Actually, I'm the ho I'm the host, so I should go last. Nico, what are you? Uh, playing? in the past week, just making my way through Metro, a bit more. Was playing uh, a few hours last night and a couple hours this morning, for the podcast, just to continue the game. 
I'm not seeing that. Enjoying uh, it. I'm not seeing that Assassin's Creed fervor. What huh? Look at uh, fervor. Yeah, this man you, basically you saying, did everything there is to do. I'm saying, but like, what I'm saying is like, it hasn't transferred over to Metro is what I'm saying. In other words, do it again. I've been busy with homework. Nerd. And, uh... Because you didn't have to... as much homework in the first block. I don't know how to explain it. In Assassin's Glasses. Creed Odyssey, which I grinded through over like a five, six week period and put 120 some hours into, something like that. Um, That game, like, you can get on it and like, it's a, it's an RPG, so you can just run around doing side questing, discovering locations and shit. Um, But in Metro, it's like, you need to be like, you can't like be like not 100 percent there like it's just it's like a survival um semi-linear shooter story game so it's like you need you need to be paying attention to what you're doing so yeah okay unless unless i feel like i can really sit down for a few hours and play it i'd rather it's not a game that you can quickly hop into and then for like 20 minutes yeah, and get back okay, out yeah, I feel that, I feel that. all right mm -hmm. and then me i'm just doing the same old same old basically i'm playing through Doom, and I'm still playing Apex and Warzone on, on PS4, and playing dabble in a little bit of League. Oh, that's another thing, Wesley, you were trying to get back into League, right? Oh, yeah, I've been playing trying a lot more League, league. my internet is continually slapping me in the face and disrespecting me. Cheat. <laughs> uh, but I upgraded my internet, uh, and uh, I just have to wait for a guy to come and do that install. But, you know, COVID, so we mm -hmm. don't know when that's going to be won't be an immediate but until then uh Whatever i will the suffer on was. i will suffer on uh while playing league yeah and then uh the other thing is that uh modern warfare had a multiplayer trial this past weekend where you could play the multiplayer for free essentially they had like a playlist that was like a was it called uh something locked down i don't know yeah, like, something it, like that. There where... was only two maps, and it was four or five game modes. I think it was five game modes on those two maps. But it was fun. I enjoyed my time with it. I, I remember now how much I actually like Modern Warfare like, in general because I played the beta, and that was fun. Although that was really the that was the 2v2 mode. Yeah. So that was a little bit different. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, yeah, I, I think I'm eventually going to actually buy it so I can play the multiplayer more often because it's a really solid game. As as Call of Duty games generally are, but Modern Warfare is really solid. Yeah, it's 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 just I forgot how much fun it is playing with your friends in that game. Yeah. All right. Okay. I think that's that, that's what we got today. That's the games that were that are happening. Um, mm -hmm. and like Trey and like Trey said, Final Fantasy VII Remake come out on Friday. Ah. Like basically, the day you guys hear this podcast. Um. Whew. Yeah, but we got we got to talk. We have, we have things to talk about when it comes to new games coming out. Now we'll talk about that later on, though. Uh, so let's go window shopping. Let's go see what's what's in the market today. Um, we in. got we got seven windows plus a couple extra if you got time. Um, number one. So this is interesting. Capcom is reportedly working on a quote larger remake than Resident Evil Three is. With new studio M2, headed up by former Platinum Games CEO Tatsuya Minami, which we actually we actually talked about this studio a little while back. I don't know if you guys know, if you guys remember that. I um, don't think so. The studio was supposed to be called M2 because yeah. it was supposed to be Minami from Platinum Games and then also supposed to be, uh, what's his name, uh, Shinji Mikami from uh, the creator of Resident Evil. Yep. Ah. We're supposed to do both do it. But um uh apparently he uh Minami approached uh Mikami about this and was and then he uh, Mikami said stay with Tango Gameworks, which is his new company under Bethesda, which has made two evil within games and is currently working on Ghostwire Tokyo. The evil inside. Um I so the evil thing. And then, uh, so yeah, but this 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 article is from Video Games Chronicle by Andy Robinson, and basically it's talking about how they wrote an article back in December of 2019 saying that th that Minami had founded the new company called M2, um, which by the way isn't owned by Capcom, but it's funded by Capcom. So they're independent, uh -huh. but they have they have a good relationship with Capcom essentially. 
um, That's good. in both uh, relationships and also in money. So, <laughs> yeah, it sounds um, like Capcom's giving them free range on whatever they're doing. Yeah. Uh, so, this was recently confirmed because Resident Evil 3's game credits actually named Minami as the executive producer of the title on behalf of M2. So they were they were a support studio for this for this remake. That's basically what happened here. Um, and this part of the article is the most significant one um, that says, while M2's role was a primarily as a support studio for Resident Evil 3, VGC understands it is currently working on or working as the primary developer on a larger remake project for Capcom. So the question now larger. is what could be a larger remake project than Resident Evil 3? I mean, not that Resident Evil 3 is a huge game, but it's it's yeah. definitely not a small game in the context of video games in, in general. Now, I don't know if this com is comparable as, as far as larger, but uh, a Marvel vs. Capcom uh, 3? Or not 3. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think it's going to be a fighting game. I highly doubt that. I, I, mm. I, they that, said is, that, is, that is like that's the dream scenario but when they when they say bigger i automatically think of resident evil 4 yeah i also thought of that but i don't know also does the i don't does i don't think multi, marvel versus capcom 3 doesn't need to be remade though does it like it's it's already got a remaster not really oh, it's not it? and it's oh, not and that. it's not that old it's only from last gen if, so, any, I, if anything it'd be uh marvel vs. capcom 2 yeah if it was going to be one of those games, yeah. But yeah, the only the only the, what I automatically think of is like I just said, Resident Evil Four, because that game mm -hmm. is the game's nuts. Yeah, that's the interesting thing, is that it, it it could very well be Resident Evil Four. Um, that's the one that came to mind. The other thing I want to point out here is that um, the the leaker. The, the popular leaker aesthetic gamer or otherwise known as dust golem which we've talked about on the show before he yes. he said that this is not a dino crisis game and it's not resident evil code veronica so based on what he knows it's neither of those properties which we've also talked about before um though we know that a, a dino crisis game might there might be a new one or something coming soon based on yeah something know. dino crisis related Trey, you and then the, uh, uh hmm? do you know what? Do you know how big the fan base is for Okami? Because that's another thing. So it Okami has its own like dedicated fan base to yeah. it, and they've always wanted like a second game, like forever, pretty much. Yeah. Um. I just didn't so, know how big that fan base is. It's it's decently big. Yeah. It's not. It's not. It's by no means small, but it's not like. Yeah. It's not like huge. Yeah, Okami can be up there. Uh, but yeah, I, I think the most Mark likely is, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the most likely situation would be uh, Resident Evil 4, though. Now mm -hmm. I'm looking at everything. The other option is that they do another remake of Resident Evil 1 because they that one has been hasn't been re that one got remade but it was a long time ago, so it really wasn't like it's not up to, to the standards of Resident Evil 2 and 3 remake at all. Yeah. Um and that'd be pretty um, crazy. I'm just like you could have like some or like you could have that one be a side project because what Resident Evil game made you guys more money and got as popular as four did? Yeah, it's true. Four changed everything. They were like, holy crap, this game is stupid long. Hmm. It's stupid it, it's scary, but while still giving the player power. There's there's just so much about that game. And I can only imagine them cutting a few things here and there. But even if they cut all of those things, that game is still going to be mad good. Because there was a... I think, I think someone from the PC community modded the game and they, put, and they like updated the graphics significantly. Oh. And it looks really good. Mm-hmm. But if you even but if but on like the PS5 or uh, you know X, X what is it? the Series X? Yeah, yeah. The Series X. game would look stupid. The game would look oh my goodness. I don't even want to think about it. Also, by the way, um Aesthetic Gamer said that this game is coming out in 2022. 
So it's a few years away. That game would look hit. Cheat. Cheat. I mean, outside, think about it. Let's, so we got those, obviously. But let's think outside of Resident Evil and Okami. Is there anything else that, that comes to mind? From I, I was I I see I saw one thing, which is Devil May Cry. Yeah, I was seeing that too. I didn't. They they could. I don't know how. I don't know a remake of of one of the Devil May Cries when five was like so stupid good. That may that might have reignited people's like interest in the Devil May Cry series. That's again. also so, true. Yeah. so they could I be like, oh, right. this is our chance to push like other games and you know get people like invested into the series and whatnot yeah mm-hmm I, I could definitely see a Devil May Cry game I don't know which one or how um I I'd imagine they'd start with the first one but I don't know how those games are from back yeah. in the day I know they they made it they did a spiritual reboot of D, of Devil May Cry the first one with DMC made by Ninja Theory that came out back on last gen um but that had mixed that had mixed feelings towards it Mm. Um, so I don't know what that means, but I think they could definitely do Devil May Cry just because of how big that series is to, to Capcom. True. Yeah. Five is I'm, just, oh. I'm not sure if at this point anything else would happen. I, part of me said, part of me was thinking just now Dead Rising, but I don't think they'd do it. Yeah, I saw that too, but I was like, eh, I don't know about that one. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know some people really like the first two Dead Rising games. Um, I only played the third one, but uh, yeah, I don't know if they would do that. But it'd be kind of cool. Though I don't know if that game needs to be remade. I think it just, I think it just needs to be rebooted. If they were gonna start, if they were gonna touch that series again, I don't know if they need to remake one of the old games. I, yeah. I'd have to look at how those games are, cause like I don't really know much too much about them. Co me, like, it's compared like, to something like three. For me, it's like 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 they're fun, but it's like yeah. yeah. If I don't have anything else I feel like playing, then eh, sure, I guess. Or if I want a game where, like, I can't play a story game because I'm in a party with my friends, and I but mm -hmm. I just want to play something, then sure, I guess I'll play that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, I think that's all we got for now. Let me know if you think of anything else. All right. Um, let's thing move I'll on say to... It's, huh? it's extremely obvious. Please... Please, please, Resident Evil 4. I'm just, I'm waiting. I'm just <laughs> waiting at this point. I'm salivating for that game. Anyway, next. Someone on someone on Twitter was talking about how uh, they were like, no, nah, that game, that game holds up really well. It doesn't need a remake. I don't want it shut to be up. remade. You I'm like, shut up right now. I'm you like, shut you your see, mouth. this is their, this is their best Resident Evil game in a lot of people's eyes. So like, they should really give it some, give it some good love. Capitalism. But, um, on that. He said, no, yeah. it still it still holds up. You mean to tell me Resident Evil 4 Resident Evil 4, it still it still looks good. Don't get me wrong. You mean to tell me that it looks as good as Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil set or you know, Resident Evil 2 uh remake. Resident yeah. Evil Resident Evil 3 re remake or Resident Evil 7. Because if that's what you're telling me, you're just lying. And I don't accept liars. Which reminds me, I loved Resident Evil 7. Ugh. Don't, e don't even, don't even. I guess the only question I have about a Resident Evil game like 4 is that w w I don't know why you'd give that to M2 when you have studios in your company that have done Resident Evil 2 and 3 Remake really well. I don't know why you'd want to again give the next project out to somebody else. Someone you That's trust, but true. still somebody else. But, so, but it, you know, you never know with these companies. They, they make weird decisions that work out, so who knows. Very true. They know more than I do about it. It's just a question. All right, moving on. Let's stick in the similar vein here because Platinum Games has revealed the fourth star in their Platinum 4 marketing campaign. And it was an April Fool's joke. <laughs> yeah, fuck you guys. We were talking about this last week. I was like, Get oh, sucked off. I was like, God damn it. It's coming out on April 1st. That probably means it's going to be an April Fool's joke. But good news is, is that this is not the end, and I'll explain what I mean in a second. But first, let's watch what they what they showed off, what they announced, because it's uh, kind of silly, and um, you know, I think I think we 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 have an obligation to see this. Okay, I have not seen this. I've only seen like a few seconds of it. So, all right, are you ready? 
Coming up. Yes. All right. Uh, one, two, three. Is it playing for everyone? Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. Jeez. Oh my god. That thing looks stupid. Oh, that noise! What's that? Now, don't kick. Sound like it's about to be an EDM these people spent all this money on our April Fool's joke. I know, on this crazy animation. Oh my god! <laughs> this is confusing. I don't know whether. Yeah, Ooh. We what? got so, it, boys. <laughs> oh, and there's an actual thing at the end. Um, so, yeah, that's basically them uh, joking about hardware with uh, this, like, hamster studio that, that and making a, a new version of this arcade game, I guess, that they've, uh, they've had in the past. But it's kind of a joke. Um, I don't think this is actually... I'm pretty sure this isn't actually happening. It's just, it's no. just, it's just a joke. So... Yeah. Yes, but good news is, is that shortly after this, Platinum Games announced that it has a bonus stage to its Platinum 4 coming sometime this year. So if you go to the Platinum 4 website, um, all the, the four stars twinkle in and then the, the page glitches and then the fifth one shows up at the top. And it's just five question marks and it says XX.XX.2020. So we don't know when it's happening. Um, sounds like we have to wait a little bit longer see what's what's coming this year um right. but we are getting it we are still getting a big announcement so we'll have to see here part of me wonders if like they were supposed to just do the fourth one and then they were just like oh the coronavirus is messing everything up let's just do an april fool's joke instead <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll do That'd the fifth, we'll do the other one later um wouldn't surprise me at this point but yeah so that's the uh not the end of the Platinum 4 announcements, but uh, the Better supposed not, end. Man. We have one more. This is number five coming soon. All right. I mean, look, it's that's that's really best case scenario. We all got April Fool. Sure, you didn't get it now, but y'all are getting it later and something extra. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wish Nintendo would give me Star Fox Zero. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. That's oh just dear God. Happen. Moving on. Um, that reminds me, we still haven't heard anything about that about the Mario stuff. Oh yeah, like offic officially yet. True, true, mm. true. Nintendo. All right. Yeah, Nintendo. true. Man. Show us the goods. Window number three. Uh, the PS5's price has supposedly leaked um, through a Canadian retailer. It's always the damn Canadian retailers, isn't Cheap. it? Cheap. You know, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Because uh, Walmart Canada leaked like three release dates a few years ago. <laughs> Remember that? Yo, Canada, y'all suck. They 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 have released they are they leaked. Gonna do this, bro. They leaked the they leaked the announcement of Rage Two. And then yeah. they leaked a few others too. I remember because uh, the Rage Twitter account like came out was just like yeah this is real and they joked about it. It was pretty funny. Um, but yeah, so basically. The, a let me just skip to the actual goods here. A store in Canada called Play and Trade um, on their Facebook page revealed that they're opening up pre-orders for the PS5, and their price mm. and their placeholder price is th 559 Canadian dollars, which translates to 395 US dollars or 320 um, pounds. Which, or that's euros. My bad. By the way, I saw this article that's pounds. and I went, no fuck way. There's just no way. Yeah, I I would be shocked. There's yeah. just no if way. If that's 
what it would be. I agree. There's. I don't think this is going to be. I don't think this is really a legitimate leak. I think this is probably just a, pl a placeholder from this company, and they're uh, just covering their ground. Though I, I don't think they're covering their ground quite enough because this console is probably going to cost more than that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm. I'm still an advocate for uh, four fifty at the very least, but it's probably going to be five hundred. Yeah. yeah. I and mean, we talked about the fact that I mean that wasn't official, but from blue from the Bloomberg report, the sources were saying that it's at least that it's costing at least four hundred and fifty dollars to manufacture the damn thing. Um, that's not even taking into account any packaging and anything else they got to put in there on top of the fact that they have to make a profit somehow. Yes. Yeah. Um, and it's it's not uncommon to see that consoles are sold at a loss because they generally are sold at a loss or broken even at launch. But to sell the console at four hundred when it probably costs around five hundred to make and ship it, it's gonna cost. That's gonna be a, a You're big. You're losing loss. a lot of money. Yeah. There's yeah. There's a lot of there's a point where you lose so much money on the console that you're not gonna make it back fast enough. You're gonna start to really dip. And investors, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, See, I don't think this is a legitimate price, quite honestly. Yeah. Uh, and they even mentions here in this article by uh, whether this is um, on T3.com. I've never heard of this before. Uh, the article was by Matt Evans. It also says here that um, a Danish retailer uh, had a leak that said that the console was listed for six hundred or 6989 Danish krone which is which is about 1000 US dollars. So, uh, so all right. That's, that's yeah, no. double the rumored price which is definitely not going to be what it costs. So Bro, as soon as game consoles start costing that much, I'm switching to PC. <laughs> yeah. Well, at that point, who knows maybe PC will be more expensive. Yeah. But we'll I see. Don't don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Hey man, my phone that I have here cost me a thousand dollars. Yeah, what things, did I just things say? are hiking up, bro. Exactly. Yeah, what did I just say? <laughs> yeah, I think I think we're gonna see a hundred dollar console. I don't yeah. think this is legitimate. Um, at first I thought this was more uh, of a real thing, but after looking at the actual article, it doesn't sound like this is gonna be what it costs. Now, if you remember what I said a while ago, that wouldn't be a bad idea to me. Oh yeah, yeah I remember. That. Go ahead. Is that maybe for like the first week or the first weekend or whatever, they reduce the price to, let's say the original price is 500. So like the first week or weekend, the price gets brought down to 450 or 475. And then after that week, then it's 500. Mm -hmm. You know, just to really get people into it. That'd be interesting. It could be so it's marketed as like a Christmas sale or whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Or I guess around that time, it would be like sale. Black Friday or something. Yeah. Though it's still up in the air whether or not the PS5 and Xbox Series X are going to come out this year. Even yeah, though we talked good. about both the console mm -hmm. manufacturers want them and plan on them coming out this year at, the, at this current moment. It's still not, you know, concrete. And I've, I've been hearing this um, talk, said on some other podcasts and things. It's a good point. The fact that we were also talking about the fact that they were having trouble. Sony in particular was having trouble getting some parts because of we're talking about like a, a DRAM and stuff like that. They were having trouble getting those parts from the manufacturers back when that article came out. And then on top of the fact that everything's kind of slow right now with the whole coronavirus, uh, it yes, might it, it might specifically push the PS5 out of the of 2020 and maybe the Xbox Series S comes out. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but we're, we're gonna find out. That, um, would, that would be a that would the be year. a decent head start for uh, Microshaft. Yep. Well, this yeah. is funny, by the way. They posted on their Facebook page about this this uh, play and trade Vancouver Island place, and it's someone asked, "What's the price?" I don't see one at all, and they replied, five ninety nine ninety nine. And there's the top reaction to that comment is laughing reacts. Hmm. <laughs> so uh, people don't don't believe that, and I don't either. It just doesn't line up with the reality that we've seen so far. Yeah. yeah. All right, number four. Uh, I'm going to try to shoot this through this real quickly, but it's some important news. Uh, Mark Cerny has clarified some underlying tech with the PS5 system on a chip uh, and the way that the clock speeds work. The, the, so the article title here from WCCF Tech by Alessio Palumbo uh, says... Palumbo. Uh, Devs don't have to optimize in any way for the PS5's variable clocks. It's all automatic. 
So it says, uh, here we go. In a follow-up interview with Digital Foundry published uh, on Eurogamer, I guess last week sometime, Cerny clarified the PS5 won't have any such problem um, as it will be handled automatically by the system. Here's the quote. Developers don't need to optimize in any way. If necessary, the frequency will adjust to whatever actions the CPU and GPU are performing. I think you're asking what happens if there is a piece of code intentionally written so that every transistor or the maximum number of transistors possible in the CPU and GPU flip on every cycle. That's a pretty abstract question. Games aren't anywhere near that amount of power consumption. In fact, it's if such a this is referring to the question I guess it was asked to him. In fact, if such a piece of code were to run on existing consoles, the power consumption would be well out of the intended operating range, and it's even possible that the console would go into thermal shutdown. <laughs> PS5 would handle such an unrealistic piece of code more gracefully. Um, uh, that says that said PS5 system already to, to confirm the console's dev kits support for fixed clocks at that can be helpful during game development. So it sounds like the, the dev kits support fixed uh, clock speeds if you want to develop for a specific clock speed, basically. Um, you can do it that way, it sounds like. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, that's basically it. Just a couple things in there, tech-wise. Just wanted to read it out for anybody who's interested. Um, yeah, so it sounds like you don't have to worry, they don't have to worry about the variable clock speed causing an issue in any way. Say, I tried reading that, and then it's, it's just like, bro, you don't understand any of this. <laughs> just give it to hide. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's basically it. Alright, that, that's a pretty quick one. I just wanted to kind of go through that. I don't really know if there's anything to talk about there. Uh, but I can't. Next one. I'm not a talker, so stop talking at me. What? Uh, Window I number mean, five. On a podcast. I don't know if that's something you knew. No, but... you can do it. That's quick to talk. <laughs> <laughs> Window number five. Despite Borderlands 3's or Borderlands 3 selling really well, Gearbox is shorting employees on their expected bonuses. Um, this comes from Kotaku. They have uh, some sources over there. And I'm just gonna read you some of this article here. Because it's pretty scummy what they're doing over there Big at scummy. Gearbox. Um, this is from Jason Schreier, of course. The video game Borderlands 3 was a big sales success when it launched last fall, according to publisher 2K, which described it as, quote, a billion dollar global brand, end quote. That's why it was shocking to employees at Gearbox, the developer of the game, when the studio CEO, Randy Pitchford, told them yesterday, this is yesterday from past Wednesday, um, that they would not receive the, the significant royalty bonuses they expected. Employees at the studio will get small bonus checks, but nothing close to the tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands that many had expected. Um, this account is based on conversations with six people close to Gearbox, all speaking anonymously because they were not authorized to talk about what happened, of course. Some said it was crushing news that, that it has upended their financial plans for the future. Um, so this is a little bit of background now about what, why this actually is a bit more surprising for Gearbox than other studios could be. Um, it says Gearbox, based in Frisco, Texas, offers its employees below average salaries for the ge video game industry, according to more than a dozen current and former Gearbox staff who have spoken to Kotaku over the years. To make up for that, the studio offers something unique, profit sharing. Royalties from all of the developers' games are split 60-40, with 60% going back into the company and its owners, while 40% is distributed to the employees in, in the form of quarterly bonuses. That's nice. Um, this system has been in place since Gearbox's inception, and when the company has big hits, it can be lucrative. When 2012's massive Borderlands 2 came out, many Gearbox workers made enough money to buy houses, a yeah. fact that the, that the studio often touted while recruiting new employees. Um, so yeah, Companies often give bonuses to their employees when, or, or even, or uh, the other way around, that publishers often give bonuses to the studio that makes the game when <clears throat> when they sell a certain amount of um, units. Uh, yeah, and when it's when there's a usually when there's a guaranteed uh, audience in that you know the studio knows that they're not really taking much of a chance in releasing the game. Um, there is a guaranteed launch bonus. Yeah. And in this case, Gearbox operates on a special thing where they give 40% of their profits. They, they give 40% of their profits back to the employees. Um, but yeah, so it sounds like that's not really happening the way that they expected it. 
The article says since then, however, Gearbox has been struggling, failing to find much financial success with flops like Aliens, Colonial, Colonial Marines, and Battleborn. As a result, quarterly bonuses have been smaller in recent years. In 2020, that was supposed to change. Several Gearbox employees told Kotaku that company management promised them six-figure bonuses following the launch of Borderlands 3. Six figures. Yeah. It's a lot of money. Like, yeah, they're like, yeah, <laughs> Borderlands, though? Remember what happened last time? Yeah, it's going to happen this time. Bet on it. Don't doubt me. Trust me. The more me. years they've been with the company, the larger the check. This, this vision of financial success helped... Gearbox's developers get through many long nights and weekends working on the game. Then, in a meeting yesterday, Gearbox boss Randy Pitchford told employees that Borderlands 3 bonus checks would be significantly lower than they hoped, um, according to three people who were present. He said the game had, had been more expensive than expected, the company had grown significantly larger than it had been in the past, and now operates a second studio in Quebec, Canada, and that their sales productions have been off base. Um, the game had sold very well. Quote, we expect lifetime unit sales to be record to be a record for the series," quote said Strauss Zelnick, uh, CEO of 2K parent company Take Two, on an earn earnings call in February. Which but is it cost somewhat uh, surprising. Way too, but it cost way too much to make. One large factor was a t was a technology swap midway through development from Unreal Engine 3 to Unreal Engine 4, yeah. which added yeah. a great deal of time to, to the project. In addition, all of that. Before Gearbox could receive any royalties from publisher 2K, Borderlands 3 would have to recoup not just the game's entire budget, around $95 million, but also the budget for all of the downloadable content for a sum of closer to $140 million, thanks to a contract that the two companies had signed. Um, Jesus. Uh, so, I don't want to read through this whole article, obviously, it'd take forever, but uh, we'll skip to this next part right here. Uh, when asked for comment, Gearbox sent over the following statement. Gearbox, or sorry, Borderlands 3 represent, represents an incredible value to gamers and an incredible achievement by the team at Gearbox Software. Our studio is talent-led and we believe strongly in everyone sharing in profitability. The talent at Gearbox enjoys participation in the upside of our games. To our knowledge, the most generalist royalty bonus system in AAA. Um, since, the pro this is, since this program began, Gearbox talent has earned over $100 million in royalty bonuses above and beyond traditional compensation. In the most recent pay period, Gearbox talent enjoyed news that Borderlands 3, having earned revenue exceeding the largest investment ever made by the company into a single video game, had officially become a profitable video game, and the talent at Gearbox that participates in the royalty bonus system has now earned their first royalty bonus on that profit. Additionally, a forecast update was given to the talent at Gearbox that participates in the royalty bonus to set expectations for the coming quarters. Gearbox is a private company that does not issue forward-looking statements to the public, but we do practice transparency within our own family. Whatever that means. Yeah, well... <laughs> I don't I'm, really said anything. See, look, my, my thing is, like, how do you guys wait this long to tell these people <laughs> that they're going to be out of this money? Exactly. Because, like... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go on, go on. I try. Oh no! I, 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 I you can finish your thought. Uh, yeah, cause like these people are already, to, you know, buy their cars, buy their houses, buy, the, you know, uh, they're they were ready for it. They were, uh, they're about about to be on that shit. But uh, they're like, yeah, nah. And then the did we get to the worst part? There's cause it gets worse. <laughs> Which part is that? About Gearbox saying, yeah, my bad, uh, if you didn't like it, uh, you can quit now if you want. Oh, yeah, where was that? Was that here? Hold on. I forget, where Where do we see that? Because uh, I know we were looking at that. Hold on. <clears throat> Let me open the article, because it should be somewhere. should be a statement. I'm gonna laugh if Wesley just made that up. I definitely you know, didn't make that, that would, up. That would be that would be fun. All right, look just look for that. Exit. I'm gonna read this real quickly. The last right. part of the article, okay. just to kind of give some context. We talked about this on, on I think on the podcast closer to when it started. Maybe not. Last year, former Gearbox lawyer Wade Callender became entangled in an ugly set of lawsuits with the studio. In one suit, he alleged that Pitchford had, a, had taken a $12 million bonus in 2016 when development started on Borderlands 3. The bonus did exist, according to two people with knowledge of what happened, but it came out of the company's 60%, not the 40% of profits that were meant to go to employees. 
Still, yesterday's news combined with the word of Pitchford's hefty bonus has upset a number of Gearbox employees, some of whom say they expect an exodus in the near future. Those who made financial plans based on the expectations set by the company's management may now find themselves in tough spots. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, so, in, in other words, I can't believe you've done this. Exactly. But, See ya. So, while Wesley's looking for for that... Um, what the fuck? Where is this quote? Because... Okay, what, I, what I'm going to uh, say, I heard this story from Kind of Funny, mm-hmm. and uh, they actually read that same article, so I'm not sure where this quote is. That means he lied to us. Was he it must have not got it from quote? this article then. Uh, yeah. That's what I'm looking only, elsewhere There was right really now. only one paragraph that I didn't read here, which was just something short, and it wasn't them saying um, that they could get out. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we can go ahead, uh, and if I find that it's nowhere to be seen, then we'll let people know. If it, if I find it, I find it. All like, right. Go ahead. So, all right. Um, and this hasn't been, it, it's not the first time something similar to this has happened. As a matter of fact, something worse has happened, although it was to a much smaller studio. And I shared this on the podcast before, but it was... Uh, way back when, like 20 years ago, something like that, when they were making an a Lego N64 game. And uh, so, so as I said, there's like a launch bonus that they were said to get. And when the game, and they spent a long time, you know, making this game, making it as well as they could. And on launch day, while, literally while they were having a party, and this is by one of the employees who was working on it, Instead of getting the launch bonus, their like boss, supervisor, whomever, literally get came to them and they were just like, "Congratulations, you're fired." Wow. And they're like, "What?" They're like, "Yeah, you're fired." And they're like, "What about the launch bonus?" It's like, "No, you're fired." So they had to get out, and they never ever got their money. Like and they, like, it's not even that like the launch bonus they never got. They never even got their final like payment for the job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, that's um, that's a problem. <laughs> that's and that's, but, that's something that used to happen more back in the day. Now it doesn't happen yeah, as often now. It was, get that, was ba- that was like back that. when game design was. Uh, it was a one and done as, sort of thing. Yeah, it wasn't as monitored or like as well as like well respected or more well known. It was still like if you wanted to be a game designer, then your parents would be like, "Oh, are you are you sure that you want to do that? You could go for like a respectable job." <laughs> um, but yeah, it's also yeah, back it's, in the day where like you didn't have DLCs and, and ongoing games, so people were just they make a game, they put it out, and the game was done. Until the studio started working on something new, the studio didn't have to have a reason for those employees to even be there. Yes. But to hear this come from Gearbox, I hear what they're saying in terms of like, you know, this game costs a lot of money to make, you know, with like all the complications that they went through. But still, as Wesley said, you could have at the very least been like, hey, because of this, that and the third, we can't give you X, Y and Z. Mm -hmm. Instead, they were just like, hey, surprise, you're fired. No, not not you're fired. It's like, hey, surprise, (laughs) you're not getting your money. Yeah, they're just basically like, yeah, right, you're not getting you as week. much money as you want. Um, or as we told you, we would originally give you, basically. So yeah, y'all are on some nut shit for that. Uh, All right. Uh, yeah, okay, I can't find this, so maybe... He lied. Uh, kind of funny he lied to me, apparently, <laughs> I guess. I don't, I don't think so, but... <laughs> That's fun. Yeah, hey, neither I do I. I like just that. can't find it. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Window number six. Um, so we have a couple. Last two things here, which we're, was all we're going to talk about for the window shopping today, is going to be these uh, a couple Call of Duty stories actually. So first things first, it's kind of short. Call of Duty Modern Warfare Two Campaign Remastered, which we talked about last week, is out now. It's Call on PS4 for twenty dollars. You can play it right now, uh-huh. and uh, it's got a. Unfortunately, it's got a one month exclusive exclusivity deal with PlayStation Ooh. like other content in Call of Duty right now. Um, but it'll be out on Xbox One and PC at the at the beginning of next month. So it's not very long. 
Um, yeah. It's still weird to me. Yeah, it is. the case. But, uh, yeah, it's cool that it's out, and, uh, there's a trailer for it, and I actually want to watch it real quickly, because it's, um, it looks really good, and I want you guys to remember what this game looks like. <laughs> and I, because I, I, I only saw this once when it was leaked last week before, actually it was leaked the same day that we, uh, that we did the podcast. Um, the trailer was leaked, and then, like, the next day it was announced. Or two days later it was announced, something because like that. Because that game mm. is, mm. All right, let's watch Dude. this, uh, the trailer. Okay. One, two, three. Whoa. The reason why I don't have this out is because my headset's turned down. History. The war rages everywhere. This is a time for heroes. A time for legends. Ouch. Drop it! This belongs to you, sir. Let's get to work. Yo, oh my goodness. Come here, boy. Bow. He said, mm, 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 mm. Mm, this part. <laughs> Yo. I remember oh that, but I remember part. this part too. It's so it's been so long since I played Let's this go. game, dude. I know. I hated climbing up that stupid mountain. Yup. Hello. Stay frosty, yeah. That's the boy. So that's just a cool little thing. You can get the ghost bundle in uh in in Modern Warfare if you want, as well. Sick. That was maximum nostalgia. Yeah, definitely. By the way, I'm pretty sure like it isn't uh, it is not available for uh in like Russia or whatever because it still has the mission no oh, Russian. Yeah. Yeah, hmm. it does. Which is the in, probably the most infamous scene in all of Call of Duty history. Yeah, because mm. uh, people don't like people don't like video games because of that one. Uh, but yeah, I true. mean, hey, some, it's, some it's a story. They're telling a crazy ass story. Yeah, that uh, the trailer definitely gave me PTSD, but the good the good kind. All right, good PTSD yep. noted. Yeah, could, you explain, could you could you expand on that, Wesley? <laughs> uh, I don't not think at all. he can. <laughs> not, not, at not at all. The <laughs> exactly, good kind can. of PTSD. Oh man, hey, you right. you felt it too. You just don't know it yet. Oh okay. <laughs> you just don't know it yet. How you going? Yeah. All right. All right. I don't think that's how that works. Uh, all right. And then the other news in window number seven here is that um, Call of Duty Insider: The Gaming Revolution, which I think we've also mentioned on the podcast before has said on Twitter that MW2 Multiplayer Remastered is actually still in development. Yeah, uh, I'm so happy. He said, Yay. and I quote, my source in, is insisting right now that MW2 Remastered Multiplayer is still in development and is still being tested on. Um, and he, uh, so that's something that might actually still be coming. Please. Yeah, and I'm, I'm very happy to hear that. Because that, uh, Model for 2... Thing, you know. Yeah, Model for 2's multiplayer, which... We we've been hearing about it since since the campaign or since the Modern Warfare Two remastered thing started going around back in 2018. We've been hearing that it's that it might not be the multiplayer, and uh, it turns out it might still be coming. Uh, it just uh, later on, and I'm really excited about that because yeah, the multi the multiplayer Modern Warfare Two is probably one of the most iconic, and uh, it's very uh, very fun, very very it's very nostalgic oh for us. My, oh my god! Um, so oh I'm looking forward to god. that. Hopefully, it actually comes out. Um, you have the all. Oh, you have the ACR. Oh my goodness. Oh. I get all. The uh, what's the, what's, the, the game. what's the gun called? So it's the V. I forget right now. I can't remember the Is exact it a sniper name. Sniper or no no no. It's SMG. Oh the uh. I know your. Is it the vector? Vector. Yeah, that's what it is. Oh. 
I didn't use the vector until the end, until like later on in my multiplayer experience. But that game was good. Um, yeah. And then the other thing that the guy said was also that he has reason to believe that this year's Call of Duty might actually get delayed out of 2020 because of the coronavirus stuff, which I don't think has ever happened before. I think I don't think Call of Duty has ever been delayed like that. Not yeah. to the significant extent that it that it leaves one year and goes into the next one, at least. Gives them more time to work on it, at least. Yeah, um, which is which is supposed to be a Black Ops, re by the way. So we'll see what happens with that. Like you, like I can't, I can't, I can, I can never remember Black Ops One, right? Well, it's or saying a, it's Black saying a Ops. reboot. It's saying a reboot of Black Ops. Yeah, that's like, what they're just doing like like way. how this one was a reboot of Modern Warfare. Okay. Yeah. Man, that means zombies is going to be back. Ooh. I hope so. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. I love Black Ops 1. Black Ops 1 Zombies is my favorite zombies. I'm sure a lot of people uh, share that sentiment. I played Black Ops on Wii, so that's now I'll go with experience. Oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> Black I Ops and it's time. through glory. Every time I'm reminded of that, I forgot I about it. that. That's so stupid. It was fun. I enjoyed it. It's kind of hard right. to be competitive in multiplayer, but other than that, it was actually kind of fun to use it's the weird mode. It's kind of hard to be competitive in multiplayer. It, it was It was true. It was actually uh, kind of fun. I remember going over your house and playing it. Hey, mm -hmm. next topic. Next. <laughs> nah, I can't do this. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, next we're going to move into a temporary addition to our show, which is their section called The Coronavirus Symptoms. Um... And uh, we have eleven stories in here, but it's we're not it's not gonna take too long, all of them. And good timing, Nico just got back from his bathroom break. There you go. Um there you go. The the first thing is pretty huge though, and that's kind of related to the last thing we just mentioned, which is The Last of Us Part Two has been delayed again. No This time <sighs> indefinitely. Fuck. We don't know when it's coming out. Basically, until further notice. That's we, crazy. We, which is crazy, because, uh, yeah, this game has already been delayed once, and and the other the crazy thing is that it's not because of the development. It seems like it seems like it's because of what they say. What they're saying is logistics around the actual release of the game. So let me read the article real quickly. This is from uh, Matt Cato over at Game Informer. Uh, so Sony Interactive Enterta Entertainment has delayed the release of the, of the Last of Us Part 2 by Naughty Dog, as well as Iron Man VR and PSVR, that's another thing, by the way, until yeah, further yes. notice due to the COVID-19 global pandemic. In a tweet to the community, Naughty Dog says it had finished the game and was fixing some final bugs in anticipation of a May 29th release. The developer wants to, quote, make sure everyone gets to play The Last of Us Part 2 around the same time. Quote, but logistical problems imposed by the current pandemic have prevented Naughty Dog and SIE from achieving that. This could allude to the inability to coordinate the different physical versions of the game. It has four, standard, special, collectors, and elite, as well as the digital one at the same time. However, neither the developer nor the publisher have specified as much. So that's what it sounds like. It sounds like they're having trouble getting around the being able to launch the physical copies alongside the digital copies, which uh, which is a problem that Final Fantasy VII Remake is happening right, having right now. Final yeah. Fantasy VII Remake, the physical versions, and I think Europe and Australia have released earlier. They're already out. Yeah. People um, have them already. But the digital versions and the physical versions in North America aren't out yet because everything's just staggered because everything's messed up because of the coronavirus and how being able to get things delivered and manufactured and not in that order, obviously, but yeah. Um, <laughs> for good delivery before manufacturing, man. Naughty Dog says it hopes factory. the delay won't be long. He's like, hey, you do it. Has, has no Gee. Gee. <laughs> Let me just look at the actual uh, quote real quickly statement. Let me just see if there's anything here. I'm just upset at this point. Yeah, man. I recently uh, rewatched the E3 11 minute gameplay trailer. Oh my god, man. That game looks crazy. Jesus Christ. And oh, like, it comes out on Friday, but... I want to play the game. So, two things. Um, Last of Us Part 2. So, yeah, that's... They're, 
they're not being able to launch it. They don't know when it's going to come out now. They haven't specified a date yet. It's probably not. That doesn't, that doesn't mean it's going to be forever. It just means they literally just don't know what exact day it's going to happen. Yeah, yet. of course. Um, it could happen literally the, a week or two late after it's supposed to come out. Like it, it, But we don't know that yet. And they don't know. Yeah. That, just, or at least they're not confident enough to tell us what it is. Um, and so it's, that's the same case with Iron Man VR. And the real the real discussion around this here is this can happen to other games. Yeah. Um, there are other games that are coming out, I'm sure, that are going to be that are going to be affected by this. And depending on how long this pandemic goes on for, or at least makes a significant impact for, this could this could uh, affect a lot of things. Um, you know, Cyberpunk comes out in September. Oh. And uh, I know there's other games coming out this summer do, do anyone remember what else oh yeah the, uh, ghost of shima is coming out in june only yeah. a month after this game was supposed to so that game is almost certainly getting pushed because they're yeah, not going to launch true. this game and that game at the same time so unless this game takes a while to launch that game's coming out even later on in the year and uh i've heard i've heard that it's kind of smart if they actually if they actually end up, um pushing the ps5 out then it would be good to launch uh, the Ghost of Tsushima in the fall anyway. So, but we'll see what happens with that. But can you guys think of any other games that are, that might uh, be um, affected by this? I'm actually looking right now. Because I forget a, what else is coming out. Um, by so, the way, I have a Games Radar uh, article that's just full of all the release dates for games this year, and they update uh, it. So, uh, oh right, you you said that a while ago. I'll share this with you guys. Um. Let's yeah, this just this. has everything that, that comes out, including, like, DLCs and stuff. Mm. So, so, you can take a look at that. So I think I think everything in April is pretty safe. Um, well, actually, I don't know about that. I take that back. Uh, what else? So, what's coming out? Uh, Gears um, Tactics is coming out, but that's, that's a PC-only game at the moment, right, I think. Yeah. That's coming yeah. out on the Xbox later, I think. Uh, Dying Light um, 2? Predator Undergrounds is a thing that might get delayed. Is that later in the year? Dying, Dying, Light, 2? 2, oh, yeah. Dying Light 2 has been delayed, uh, I think, indefinitely as well. Yeah, yeah. Is that, We don't know be... when it's coming out now. It was supposed to come out this spring. Yeah. Um, I'm just taking a peek on this list to see if there's anything we, it, and we can uh, uh, Ubisoft surmise and gods get and delayed. Monsters. Uh, looks like it doesn't have a release date either. So, that's part right. of the stuff that got delayed to later, like to later this year yeah. that we talked about. Um, I think late last year or early this year that that was getting all the stuff that got delayed from Ubisoft. Yeah. So, question: hmm. Do you think this will impact any of Riot's projects at all? The coronavirus in general, maybe. The, the context that we're talking about it right now, I don't think so. At least not yet. I don't know if... I don't know if there would be a physical release for any of these games, for, first of all. Um, I mean, we know Legends of Ruterra is not coming to console or anything, so there's not going to be a physical no. version of that game. Valorant is only coming to PC right now, so it's, that's going to be that's probably going to be digital only as well. Um, heard that. Heard the demo. The, not demo. Uh, the, the closed beta was clean. Yeah. yeah, or is clean rather. Yeah, it, the closed beta opens for everybody else starting tomorrow. So uh, yeah, if you got a drop key while watching Twitch the other day, you might be, you will play that. <laughs> um, there's other smaller games impressed. in here. There's other smaller games in here that are gonna get that might get affected. But then the next big thing really is Marvel's Avengers on September 4th, and then Cyberpunk 2077 on September 17th. Um, and then beyond that, of course, those are the gr crazy fall games that are coming out that we have to worry about. So. We shall see. Um, yeah. Oh, this is oh yeah, grounded by uh, grounded is coming out uh, in spring supposedly. That's supposed to be by um, who's that by again? That that's the Xbox and PC game. Which game? Grounded. Who's making that again? Supposed to be Obsidian Entertainment, huh? Obsidian Entertainment. Oh, it was Obsidian. I was because I was thinking uh, Ninja Theory. I'm like, it's not Ninja Theory. Um, Obsidian, yeah, that's Obsidian's game. They have a couple of things that we're going to talk about in here, too, by the way, that, that have gotten delayed already. Yeah. So let's just move on. Let's just move on to the next thing. Um, yeah. So, next uh, com Combo Breaker 2020 tournament has been 
that was set for May 22nd to 24th has now been canceled. F. Um, yeah. So that's just not happening at all this year. Yeah, it's pretty uh, much. If if it's if there isn't if there was any in person like event, it's probably closed. Yeah. Yeah. Not closed, but you know, canceled. Um, I actually didn't know that Combo Breaker was like one of the. It says the article here says arguably the most popular and well respected tournament in the fighting game community, second only to Evo, basically. Um, yeah, Combo Breaker is one of the one of the big ones. Mm. So that's a shame that it's canceled. It really is. Indeed. There's a lot of information here. If you guys want to go, if anyone's actually was planning on going to the event, there's a whole bunch of information here about getting refunds, getting uh, getting back hotel deposits. Um, it sounds like they're actually still going to ship out badges, lanyards, and any other things you bought alongside your passes. So you still get all that cool stuff that you ordered, but you're actually going to get a refund on the event regardless. Um, yes. So mm -hmm. there's some cool things there. So if you're interested in Good that, guys. go check that out, obviously. But uh, it's a shame. They already did they say that they're still planning on resuming operations uh, at the typical scale next year. So that's good for them, at least. But yeah, so that's a shame that's not happening this year. And then when is Evo, by the way? That's not Evo for a while. is mid April. I mean, not mid April, mid August. Okay. Yeah, we'll see about that. So yeah, they still have some time to decide what's going on with that. Mm hmm. Yeah, that should so, better be canceled for real. Though, so funny hey, enough. Calm down. We just we told about August. Uh, QuakeCon 2020 has been canceled. That's number three on our list here. Whatever. Um, yeah, whatever. The, the in, it's QuakeCon, so you know it's Quake. It's not a very big thing, but the important thing here is that QuakeCon is also a place where Bethesda likes to announce things as well. Considering um, their current track record, whatever, dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's been canceled straight up. Um, even though it's all the way out in August, they basically just said like, even like we just don't know how things are gonna go. Um, so the thing that sucks though is this is their 25th anniversary of QuakeCon, so that's just like a, a mark a marquee year for them. So they can't Dang. do that. Sorry, that now sorry. they can't do that. Um, and then alongside that, uh, after the cancellation of E3 2020, many companies were planning digital showcases to show off their new products. Though we have now learned that the Bethesda will not be having a digital showcase um, around that E3 time, um, putting up in the air that their what their plans are going forward, showing off games. Um, and then I saw this in the article. I was reading. We knew that they were go they were going to show off the games Death Loop by Arcane Studios, which I think we saw already once, and Ghostwire Tokyo from Tango GameWorks, which we saw last year, um, which was the where uh, the what's her name. Uh, Nakamura, or what was her name? Ikumi, the one girl that's yeah, Nakamura, all very enthusiastic. Right? Yeah, that that's yeah, no, yeah. she's no longer with the studio, but that's where we first saw yeah. her was at that announcement. Um, and there was also a rumor that they were going to show off the little note about game Starfield, which has only been briefly teased, not really shown off anything. Um, but we know that's their that's that's Bethesda GameWorks' next big game. So we're waiting to see what that actually is. Uh, so. It's at the same time a shame, but it's interesting now that so they're pulling out of QuakeCon, they're pulling or they're canceling QuakeCon, they're pulling out of their E3 plans. So I think this might actually be good for Bethesda because they may be able to go quiet for a bit and just kind of hold their stuff and uh, make your game show good. it more when they're when they're ready to show something more interesting. Although we really haven't seen much from Ghostwire Tokyo, we only saw cinematics, right? We didn't see a gameplay or anything. Yeah, yeah, no. And then I don't I don't remember what Deathloop is. It's this game with like it has the where is let me just get the remember this like this guy and this girl I don't remember what they're doing this is like That's this dope right. looking yeah, cinematic that we got from East Three this past summer and they're trying they're like yeah it's one of those by the name of the game it's one of those death loop games where it's like you you're doing shit then you die then you like do it again but differently or something like that. Groundhog's Day. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Arcane, Arcane is the guys that have made a. They made a ton of games. They've made they made the Prey game. They made uh they made the uh, Dishonored series. They made a bunch of stuff. So it looks like that's kind of like a mixture of all that stuff in there. So, yeah. But ultimately, Bethesda has been show, having an E3 showcase every year, and they really don't need to. They really only needed to have one when they announced Fallout Four. <laughs> and then maybe have one every few years after that, but they uh, they have they have they've had one every year. So I, guess, I think this is actually good for them, and I think they realize that in this case. Hmm. Um, 
And they'll get the important news that they need to get out some other way anyway. Eventually. So then we have some good news here. Uh, four pieces of good news, actually. So first things first, Rockstar Games is donating 5% of its revenue for the entire month of April to coronavi coronavirus relief efforts. Um, let me go to this article real quickly. Uh, yeah, starting April 1st and continuing through the end of May. Oh, through the end of May. Oh, oh. this is, I was lied to. Uh... 5% of our revenue from purchases in our online games, GTA Online and Red Dead Online, will be donated to COVID-19 relief efforts. These funds will be used to help local communities and businesses struggling with the impacts of COVID-19, both directly and by supporting some of the amazing organizations who are on the ground helping those affected by the crisis. As things progress, we will share more of these. We will share more on these efforts. So, good on Rockstar. They're sharing money mm -hmm. um, with uh, with and people who need it. Only thing I'm gonna say is keep in mind that is they they have a lot of money to spare. Yes. Like when you, when you take into consideration that's how much that's, money this this company makes. <laughs> like just GTA five and Red and Red Dead Two. Like when you just take those into consideration, it's nuts. Yeah. It sounds like it's specifically purchases in their online in the online uh modes of those games, but that's still a lot of money. So you know how many um, people buy the the like the currency for GTA 5? I, it's Crazy. ridiculous. How much Rooster Teeth spends on it alone? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's true. Jesus Christ. Um, A couple of the things that are happening in the gaming community, other than the things that we're going to read after this, um, is uh, GameDev.World, which is, uh, I think, uh, oh no, these are the guys we're talking about. They were, they were, uh, they made a GDC relief fund fundraiser to help people who were affected by GDC being postponed. And then there was also there's also Humble Bundle, which is a has a new bundle to provide COVID nineteen support. Yeah, it's big. With a hundred hundred percent of the profits going towards the support, the bundle includes games such as Undertale, Hollow Knight, and Super Hot. So there's some cool, there's some good stuff in there. Great games. Then beyond that, uh, we have. Uh, the next thing is Sony Corporation, the head company that owns PlayStation, if you didn't know, <laughs> has launched a $100 million oh, global relief fund around the around the virus. So uh, that's pretty big, too. <laughs> um, yeah, this, the corporation revealed that it will be supporting the COVID-19 relief effort in three main areas. Assistance for those individuals engaged in frontline medical and first responder efforts to fight the virus support for children and educators who must now work remotely and support for members of the creative community in the entertainment industry so yeah this 10 million dollars of the fund will be allocated first and foremost to organizations such as uh medicine sans frontiers i don't know what the hell that is uh the frontiers that's not spelled that's, I know, like, that's, right? that's not english uh, USF and uh, the COVID-19 Solita Solidarity Response Fund. And there's a whole bunch of more information here. But yeah, they're giving money to help to help people out in different areas during this time. So that's good for that. It's good on them. Awesome. Take that, COVID. Oh, I just, I didn't even see this till now. Nintendo recently donated nearly 10,000 respirator masks to healthcare workers in Washington. In Washington. Clean. Um, CD Projekt Red has donated almost $1 million to help fight COVID-19 spread in Poland. That's what I like to see. Um, yeah. Then there's, uh, I'm going to stick with the money topic here and say Mixer is giving $100 to each of all of its um, partnered streamers to help with the financial burden caused by the virus. So if you're, par if you're a partnered streamer on Mixer, you're getting $100 in your paycheck, just cool. regardless. Clean. Um, uh, which people have criticized that the, it's... You know, Microsoft owns Mixer, so you could definitely give more than a hundred dollars. But I'm not complaining, yeah. um, and I don't and think they not, are either. There's not a ton of partners like Twitch, so yeah. Uh. Um, but they can. They, I'm sure someone can uh, could use an extra hundred bucks right now, for sure. Yeah, I, use I, I, bucks I, I know I could <laughs> exactly. Um, and then lastly, in terms of all the good news here. Uh, HBO has made hundreds of hours of films and TV shows free to stream during the worldwide pa pandemic on uh, until April 30th. Um, oh, is that where the April 30th date came, date came from? That's where I was confused before. Yeah, okay. Uh, things such as Detective Pikachu, The Lego Movie 2, The Wire, Sopranos, 
So Silicon Valley, Veep and Six Feet Under are among the free offerings. But there's Veep. But the, I, don't, I don't know what that is. But there's much, much more. It's so a lot, version of Deep. A lot of TV, cheap. A lot of TV shows and movies. Um, and Going for a ride. But I will Mighty. note, Game of Thrones is not a part of this offering. Dag. Ending sucks anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no surprise there, because that's one of their biggest series. I'm sure they want your money for that one. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you have the rest of the entire month to watch a bunch of things for free on HBO, which is rare for HBO, which is known as a paid service forever. Or a paid set of channels on your TV before oh, that. Yeah, it's a god It's like a hubble. Hubble. So I think HBO Now dot com and HBO Go dot com is where you can watch all that stuff or the apps. Or HBO later. Cheat. Sorry. <laughs> so that's all of the good news, which is nice. A lot of people uh, a lot of companies giving back in some way, shape, or form, trying to help. Uh, trying to help all the burden, ease the burden right now in the world, which is uh, definitely needed. Nice, to, nice, nice to see, because people are going insane with this quarantine. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and people are just legitimately dying. So <laughs> that too. Hey, hey, hey. I think I think we're up to seventy k now, probably. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, I think so. In deaths, um, that's worldwide, by the way. All right, and then we have a few more things here. So Amazon's rumored cloud gaming service titled Project Tempo, which we've talked about once before on the podcast, was supposed to debut at least in a beta form this year, though it may now be pushed to 2021 due to the global pandemic. Um, so that's a thing that was coming that we're probably not going to see this year anymore, unfortunately. But I, A, if, if Google Stadia is any indication, take all the time you need. <laughs> make, yeah. it something you, make it something great. Um, before you come out and show show the world, honestly, I wouldn't even do a beta, like a, like an open beta. I would do a, I would do a, you know, all right, we're gonna make it all work, but 100 percent clean. We're gonna do a closed alpha or something like that. Get make sure it works, and then we'll we'll roll it out. They don't need to test load really as much because it's it's AWS. They they it's Amazon Web Services. This is yeah. the, the the industry leader in cloud right now. It'll yep. be all right. See all the commercials of the little girl saying, "How do they know that?" Yeah, how do they know that? I don't watch TV. The way so. you said that. It's a good commercial, but it's, I don't watch it's TV funny. either. But I turn yeah, golf how on. Do they know so, that? oh, we even watch, I do CNN watch TV. For, for I was about to say, so you watch TV? <laughs> and that. No, but I don't like. Sit I I get that, but you watch TV. I guess. Uh, um, and then two other things related to Amazon, actually. On a side note, the two remaining games being developed by Amazon's owned teams, uh, which are Crucible, which is a team-based shooter of some sort, and Probably. New World, which is an M MMORPG, which are both built on Amazon's own game engine um, called Lumberyard, they are both coming out next month, apparently. Um, Amazon had announced back in 2016 that there had three games in development. One of them had, has been canceled since then, and Crucible was recently kind of missing. No one really knew if it was still coming out. And then apparently recently that was confirmed uh, that it's coming out next month, actually. So mm -hmm. good for them, I guess. But we'll see more about that when that come when they really push that. You know, being Amazon owning Twitch, that we'll see a push on it for sure. Um, and then number two of that of the side notes here is that Amazon Prime Day 2020 has also reportedly been delayed, which makes sense. No surprise there. Yeah. Um, and then we get two more things here. The ESA has announced E3 2021's dates, um, which is June 15th to the 17th. Um, still touting a reimagined E3. Uh, so, okay, E3 still happening next year. I guess that's a good thing. That's I'd good. Say. Definitely good. Yeah, yeah. but they, yeah, but they're uh, changing some things, which yeah, I think it'd be. I think I think that now is a good time to consider yeah. doing that now that you have an extra year pretty much an extra year to, to plan it yeah all right and then another thing i wanted to add alongside this ign has decided to fill the e3 gap this year by announcing a digital event dubbed um that's taking place in june dubbed summer of gaming which uh which they partnered with numerous publishers and industry companies on including 2k 
Square Enix, Sega, Bandai Namco, Amazon, Google Stadia, Twitter, Devol Devolver Digital, and 2K or 2K, uh, THQ Nordic. So I didn't even know that was happening. So oh, okay, yeah. Speaking of, I've, I've, I'm pretty sure I said this last time. Sega, where's where's my Sonic news? It's true. Where's yeah. my hey, Sonic don't rush news? We, we don't yeah, want to rush them. That's, that's not right. We were talking At about this so point, whether we rush them or not. Whatever, dog. You're, you're just going to do whatever you want. It's true. We we're talking about Sonic on PS4 the other day. Jesus. Yeah. You know that uh, episode of SpongeBob where he he has the the other SpongeBob's in his head uh, trying to figure out what the fuck's going on and they're all everything's on fire and everyone's running around. Yeah, that's uh, Sega yep. right now. Fine dining. Or or rather, that's yeah. Sonic yep. Team. Sega 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 doing fine. Oh yeah, yeah. So that's Sonic Team specifically. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah I almost forgot about that. But yeah, Who's they. Someone's backing up on Yeah, who's uh, ass? I was about to say. Up. I heard that. <laughs> Someone so, is... Hold on, let me... I think, I think it's... I think it is on trade, then. That's <laughs> on my... What is happening? <laughs> what is happening? I'm <laughs> <scared> <laughs> hold on, on, let me look out my window. <laughs> what we got going on? All right, uh, someone vamp while he does that. Wesley, I'm not watching TV. I'm watching things that happen to be on TV. That's still watching TV, though. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't watch TV shows. I uh, he still like he, he actually there is one there actually is one TV show that I have recording because I need I want to watch it. That's well, true. Same same actually. I haven't started watching it. Though. Hmm. I guess what, this conversation is over. I'm All going right. to be watching. TV, Last but thing I on the list for our coronavirus TV. news: Gamescom. Gamescom. What the fuck did I just say? Yeah, Gamescom. Gamescom. May Game take stop. place <laughs> as a digital only event, which the organization will determine in mid May. Um, they are they are also significantly expanding. That's their that's their way they worded it. Their opening night live live stream and uh, their Gamescom now digital event that that kind of takes place at the same time sort of thing. So they're planning ahead that they might need to make they might need to move Gamescom to a digital only event. Um, should that decision be made they said they'll make that decision mid-may and gamescom is currently set to go from august 25th to the 29th so we'll see if that happens wouldn't be the end of the world if it gets canceled like everything else but it is one of the la la the last standing game events of this year uh that's still happening at I the current like at the current moment just put everything on hold exactly what just have stop. i been saying for the past Three, four weeks, bro. Just stop. That it. We should that we yeah. should call it COVID nineteen instead of coronavirus. <gasps> uh, I did say that also. I mean, and I, I, uh, I've been seeing a lot of COVID instead of Corona. Um, Otakon, which is the anime convention me and Trey go, me and Trey are going to later this year, is still going on. They they announced yesterday. They were just like, yeah, no, we're still planning on going on, but like we're watching. Please don't it. cancel it. But they're, <laughs> it's they're, like they're the only thing I look forward to every year. But they were like, <laughs> we're still keeping an eye on everything closely, you know. They're not being irresponsible with it. They, they sound like they understand what's going on. All right. That's it for coronavirus symptoms. Let's hop into the trailers. We got a couple quick trailers to watch, and then we're going to news blast our way out of here. Indeed. Yep. Nice. Um, so first, uh, John Wick Hex is coming to PS4 now. It, what? Uh, what? Continue. It's uh, it was already out on Mac and PC, but it's it's uh, it's coming to PS4 on May 5th, and it's still in development for Xbox One. So we wanted to just watch the trailer real quickly for this game because it sounds cool. Um, cheap. Get bunk. Foomp. What? What happened? I don't know. You foomped me. It happened earlier. Uh, all right, we're gonna watch this video real quickly. All right. Oh, by the way, it looks like my my neighbors were like redoing their mulch or something, so that's why you heard oh, oh, so, so okay. many trucks or whatever. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, makes sense. Alrighty. One, Got two, three. Up. Power. Forget power. Respects power. Power respects Ur. Earn a place by Forget Ur. Side. They need to demonstrate power. John Wick. Killing you demonstrates power. But I'm John Wick. Anchor. 
Look at the banker. The dancer. Uh, I hate it. Yeah. I was a whole beat. Defines exactly. Power defines our reality. Alrighty. Cool. So yeah, that's coming out in about a, actually exactly a month from now. PlayStation 4, and it's already out on PC if you want to play it. Nice. Um, and the other thing is, Wesley shared this. This game is called Mortal Shell. I don't. Yeah. He says like he says like Dark Souls like, but it's a it Dark Souls like cool. indie game. And uh, when you see this game, it's not gonna look like an indie game, but it's an indie game, uh, and it's by Playstack, which is a new studio, which is yeah. which is also uh, really uh, clean. So uh, let's just get into it, cause I I actually I'm not gonna play this game, but I think this looks really dope. Now okay. is it is it is it like oh this looks like a game that would be fun to watch someone else play? Yeah, I'd watch someone else play it. It's just that I'm not a Dark Souls person, and I know neither are you. Yeah. Uh, and that's really my only barrier to this thing. But other than that, this game looked clean, man. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, before starting this, I wanted to say. Though I haven't played any Dark Souls games, I did play uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, as all you guys know, yeah. which is does have some uh, Souls elements to it. So yes, it I'm kind of now interested in this genre of games. You played Bloodborne, um, didn't you? I tried to, but I didn't like yeah. it at all because the game seemed to give me no direction as to what to do or how to do anything. So I had no I idea what I was doing in the game. Yeah. And game the game's already man. difficult, so I was like, fuck this shit. I might yeah. try again at some point, but I don't know. Um, and so I'm curious in like playing like the surge. And yeah, so, I have that game. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious as to what this is and if maybe I'll get it. So we'll All see. All right. All right. Let's get it popping. Come here. One, up. two, three. You seem to what I said. Indie game. Yeah. Some I'm indie studios are capable of truth. doing this kind of stuff. And this is a new studio. Yeah. It's a new indie studio, bro. Will you pry these gifts from the unwilling? Why is Kenyatta in my ear? I'm sorry. Facts. Or will you learn? What this reminds me of, it, it kind of reminds me of, uh, like Dark Souls mixed with like the combat from, uh, uh, uh Hellblade. That's what I was, that's what I was thinking. I was like, it reminds me of Hellblade. Yeah. yeah. Oh, all right. Oh my god. Yeah, man. That shit look crazy. Nah, I'm good. I'm alright. An empty shell. Flesh and instinct without purpose. Whoa. Yeah, so it looks like you can, you can, like, take bodies. Or something. Okay, so he just has fighting game armor. What? Nope. Dad. <laughs> oh my god! No. Okay, Alright. Crazy. Nah, I'm, good. I'm gonna keep nah, an eye I'm on high. this game. Nah, hmm. Like, I- like I said, I don't know if I'd play it. <laughs> I don't think I will. Playstack London. I kinda You're wanna definitely see... definitely gonna see a donkey video, that's all but I'm But I definitely- I kinda wanna <laughs> see someone play it. I kinda wanna see it. God, I can't right. wait to watch someone else play this and for me never to. I'm saying. All right, well, Wesley, I'll let you know if I if I take a sneak peek as oh, PlayStack's the pa PlayStack's the publisher. It looks like. What was the developer there? Uh, Cold Symmetry. Oh, Cold Symmetry. That's the developer. My bad. That's the studio I'm talking about. Yeah. I saw PlayStack on the article and was just like, "That's it. All my research is done. I don't need to do anything else." It says that it's supposed to come out quarter three this year. Um, on so PS4, Xbox happen. One, and PC. Cool. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's a new studio. I'm curious if this if it's like from the ground up new, or if there if there's some industry veterans in there somewhere. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll keep an eye on it. it. Looks cool. Um, and lastly, um, but not leastly. What? <laughs> All right. We're uh, no, we're no, gonna... no, we're no, we're gonna act like that's a word. 
Yep. That's we're, what's... we're gonna news blast our way out of here. All right. Hey, that's my thing. <laughs> so I'm gonna start us off here because I'm gonna. There's one. There's only. There's one here that I that I indicated I need to be the one to read because there's something to read in it. Wait. Mm. All right. So first things mm, okay. first. Uh, we didn't have this news last week, but we have it now. Uh, Xbox Live Gold free games for April, which is now six days into the month. <laughs> uh, nice. Project Cars 2 it will be available on Xbox One throughout the entire month. Um, oh. uh, Knights of Pen and Paper, the bundle, I guess, uh, will be available on Xbox One starting midway through this month, through midway of May. Um, Fable Anniversary will be will be available for the first half of, of this month on uh, Xbox 360 and, of course, Xbox One through backwards compatibility. And Toy Box Turbos will be available from, from Xbox 360 through the sec from the second half of this month. Um, also, backwards compatibility, as all as all uh, games with gold games are. So, real quick, is it going... Like, what's the order? Is Wesley next, then me, then Nico? Question. Um, you go. I mean, I'll, I'll read the second one since, the, uh, since it's Half-Life. Uh, all right. right. Sure, right. go ahead. Uh, Half-Life one Alex, one now one of the top ten games rated on Steam, surpassing all other Half-Life titles and sitting among games like Portal, Portal 2, The Witcher 3, Factorio, and A Hat in Time. Crazy. Nice. And I can confirm that. That game is absolutely fucking bonkers. I'm here. Um, that's actually crazy because, uh, uh, like, Portal 2 was such a huge success. Um, and for a VR game to be on that level is actually insane. Yeah. Like I said, Half-Life Alex is going to be similar to the way that Half-Life was for PC gaming. Half-Life Alex is doing that for VR, I think. I think yeah. Half-Life Alex is, like, the VR game. At this point in time, I think that's what uh, Valve is doing. Just doing, just pioneering uh, in like within new technology. That's yeah. what they. That's what they do with their games. That's yeah. why they don't come out with the games too often. Yep. Uh, All right, bring it over to Wesley next. Let's pretend we're going in counterclockwise order of what we're oh, where we be normally be sitting. Uh, the Outer Worlds finally has a new release date on Switch. It is June fifth, twenty twenty. So yeah, uh, <clears throat> play that game. It's uh, I haven't played all of it, but I played enough of it to tell you that it's cool, and you should, pl you should nope. try it. <laughs> she <laughs> <Yeah>, nope. <laughs> I played enough of it to tell you that it's cool. So go ahead. <laughs> uh, all right, next all right. Uh, Terrar Terraria, Terraria, whatever, uh, which originally launched all the way back in 2011 on PC, has now sold over 30 million copies. 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 Yum. copies. That's a lot of copies, man. That, that's the, the new attack. word. I don't want to hear copies ever again. Copies is it. This game's been out for nine years. That's crazy. 30 million that's units. Crazy. Only 30 million? <laughs> this game sucks. Cheap. All right. Uh, I played they, I played Terraria on my Xbox 360 in like 2013, man. Yep. That's how it was. I tried to get into I it. couldn't get into it. Good I always day. looked at it as, "Hey, this isn't Minecraft," and I was like, "I already have Minecraft, so I'm, I'm, I'm good." It, it's a sandbox survival like Minecraft. Besides that, they're not similar. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of yeah, there's, there's a, a lot, lot of differences, difference. but couldn't get into it. Uh, next on the list, um, Sony Interactive Entertainment Japan Studio has established an external development department. Um, real quickly, what, let me just tell you what this means and and what they said. So their announcement said that uh, they're doing some organizational changes in the company. They're, um, you know, they're in renaming departments, stuff like that. This is a part of the whole thing. So what this actually means, though, is somebody mentioned this on Twitter, and I believe this is correct. They said that uh, this means that more Sony games made by Japanese non-Sony studios um, will be coming. Things like Bloodborne, Demon's Souls, Everybody's a Golf, etc., Ah. Um. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's that. Okay. Uh. We can skip this next one since we're low on time, but we can finish the last three pretty quickly. So let's just go let's move through it. All right. Uh, who's next, Trey? Trey's back. Right. No, it was going to Nick it. Uh, uh, the latest uh, Steam hardware. The latest Steam hardware survey has revealed that around at least one million Steam users own a PC VR headset. Wow, that's a lot of people. It's going back to the Half Life Alex thing. That's a lot of people, man. 
yeah uh moving to vr now yeah. the only thing i was interested in with this is how fast are they selling well we know that uh, valve indexes were sold out and they're backed up on order i think right yeah so. i don't know if they're i don't know if they are now but they were at least yeah all righty okay that's true you try no, it's right. it's you, Wesley. What? Come on, son. Was I? Uh, I wasn't after Nico last time. Yes, yes you, you were. were. What the fuck? All right. Well, <laughs> uh, Ocean Ex Exploration Pirate Game Sea of Thieves is coming to Steam soon. There yep. you go. That's it. Uh, Ticket soon. soon, TM. Yeah, because they said coming soon, so that, can, <laughs> that means anything. <laughs> whatever that, whatever they, whatever they mean by that. If we're putting a trademark on on the word soon. Anyway. Um, and lastly, Trey, re take us home. An Inside Xbox episode is happening tomorrow. Is that? Oh, okay. That's a series. Never mind. Yeah. Um, April 7th. So expect some news from that in next week's podcast. Yep. Uh, uh, they announced it today that they're doing a that they're doing an X Inside Xbox tomorrow, which is their like wonder, live stream thing. What other news can we get on the Xbox besides pricing? Yeah, we'll see if we get anything. The, the initial announcement said like some games that we that didn't include Halo, it didn't include Xbox oh. Series X, but but uh, this it did say and more. So we'll see. Maybe that maybe we'll show up in that and more section and mm. get something interesting. Okay. But that's All it. Right. That's it for this week. Take us home, Trey. <clears throat> Freaking cash box. <laughs> cash box. Get started cash with box. that. All right, got you. All right, it's going to be it for episode 25 of the Market Podcast. You know what I'm saying? Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. Remember to give us a like on the video, obviously, if you liked it. Or if you disliked it, you could like it, too, you know, just to confuse us. Um, I don't think that's that And comment sure. if you want to. You know what? Comment even if you don't want to. Um, <laughs> literally just Comment literally just that say, you don't want to. I was about to say, literally just comment, <laughs> I don't want to. Um, uh, you know, we want to hear y'all's opinions on the topics, even though I probably will forget them in the next five minutes. Um, subscribe if you want to see more and don't forget ever um, and you already know if y'all are sitting there wishing you could listen to the show while you're doing homework or you know whatever y'all getting into like I said not the bathroom don't want to hear that um, look no further we're on a number of podcast platforms like Apple Podcasts Spotify uh, Google Podcasts not that other one and everything else <laughs> um, <clears throat> all links are in, the are in the description same for you audio listeners if there's anything you want to see from this podcast hop on over to youtube as i've been saying since day one at black market game and if you're not in threat. case you're not in case you're not heeding the warning that i'm relaying to your ears right now you already know you will feel my wrath what is that wrath this time i'm going to take out all of all of the light bulbs from from the lamps shades whatever in your house i'm not going to give them back instead i'm going to replace them with with glass toothpicks what? what? <laughs> I said glass toothpicks. Yeah. I oh. I can just picture a um, <laughs> Trey going to someone's house, taking off the the uh <laughs> the lampshade, uh take unscrewing the light bulb and then just putting this like thin glass tooth toothpick just horizontally on top of <laughs> the film. Exactly, I'm not even gonna screw <laughs> some of them will be screwed in, some of them the others oh, won't. It's gonna hear tink. How do you screw in a glass toothpick? That's what I was about to say. You're Are they that to, big? And you'll find out if you're if you're not watching us on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> I don't I don't think you want to encourage them. Don't find out. Go go over to YouTube and watch us. Go over there. Do it. Yeah, exactly. Y'all know. Goodbye. Goodbye. Don't ever talk to me again. Say goodbye. Uh, no. See you later, guys. Have a definitive have a, editions have a from Mafia week. Two and Three leaked by rating boards. Goodbye, guys. No, no, what? Hands. No, you didn't hear that. Wash, Shut up. No. Wash your hands. Blow your nose. Stay inside. Scrub True. your feet. Yep. Wipe your ass. Wipe your ass. <laughs> please, please wipe your ass. All right, all right, all right. All right. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Last, last thing. I'm oh sorry because because Leslie just reminded me of this. <laughs> if the, if you, if this is inspiring you. To wash your hands after, if you are now washing your hands after after pooping or peeing, whereas you didn't before, I don't care. You're still nasty. <laughs> Cause it takes a pandemic for you to clean yourself the way you should. You're nasty. It's true. 
Now it's true better late than never, but it should never have come to that. You mean to tell me that you that you sitting out here dropping hot booty biscuits and relieving yourself at the urinal and you not washing your hands? You're nasty. All right, I'm done.